and I think we should be live on Facebook. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Strategic Swing Trader. I'm Sami Abusad, Director of Education here at T3 Live. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great weekend. This is my normal weekly video where I go over the market and provide you with some amazing ideas for the following week. Before we start, as always, a standard required disclaimer to let you know that trading is risky and that whatever we discuss today is for educational purposes only. Also, if you're interested, I've put together an amazing free ebook. If you'd like to download it, link is in the description. Again, amazing free ebook. Link for that is in the description. But with that said, let's go ahead and get started by turning on the charts and taking a look at the market. If you'd like to, to get the list of stocks that I have on this watch list, I dropped it in the description. So just you can go to the description of the video, copy and paste it, okay? Bullish list and bearish list. Long, long list for the next week. We'll start off by going over the cues. If you find benefit in today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. The, the market had a pullback last week, as you can see, and the 20 period moving average, which is when it's trending, it acts as support. When it's uptrending, when it's downtrending, it acts, it acts as re resistance. So as you can see, the 20 period moving average held up, okay? Now we got a double bottom on the hourly chart, as you can see, that's always bullish when the double bottom uh, works, but when it fails, then it's bearish. With that in mind, if we take out 298, I think 298.10, 10. yeah, 298.09, let's say 298 even, that would be a little bearish, okay? Because we double bottomed, the failure of something bullish is always bearish. So a double bottom is bullish. Two pivots is better than one pivot. So we got one pivot, two pivots. So if we break under 298 on the Qs, then that signals probably more selling to come, but there isn't a whole lot of room to drop. Maybe 290, that would be the most I would expect. And only if we break 298. Otherwise, the bias into going into next week should be bullish, should be neutral to slightly bullish until we take out 303.68, okay? This bar's high, the big green bar's high. 303.68 on the Qs. We can also look at the SPY. It looks pretty much identical, similar. I don't wanna say identical, similar to the Qs, okay? We, we're losing the momentum. You know, we're lo I think we're losing the momentum. We haven't gone anywhere almost the last couple of weeks. We're kind of losing the momentum. But the market remains long-term bullish. If we finish the month as a narrow range bar, this is the monthly chart, also the same with the Qs. If we finish the month as a narrow range bar like so, we're still not even halfway through the month. But if we finish as a narrow range bar and then we break under the narrow range bar's low, that's next month in January, we break under this bar's low, that will be a double top on the monthly chart. And that would be very bearish in my opinion. We will actually have put in a breakout failure to some extent if we break under it. But again, that's not until January of next year. We have plenty of time between now and then, okay? So for now, the bias for next week at least should be is slightly bullish until we actually clear the prior bars high on the daily chart. And if we do, then back to all out bullish. If we break under the lows, then that would be bearish, but there is not much room to fall. Even if we were, even if we were to drop, I don't think there's a lot of room to fall. So with that said, let's go ahead and now take a look at the watch list for next week. Some of these symbols are a bit on the thin side, you know, low volume side, so, but for day trading, I require stocks to do at least a million for day trading. But for swing trading, I'm not looking for, you know, 10 cents. I'm not looking to get in now and, fight and get out 10 minutes later. I'm looking to hold it for a few days. So, and I'm looking for a much more significant move. So I don't mind it if the stock is on the thin side, okay? Now, I prefer to get to, to trade liquid stocks, but sometimes some of the better ideas, some of the better setups, uh, you know, come on uh, thinly traded stocks. Okay, APM as a breakout. I like it over 293. Okay, it's gonna be 
you know, I, this is called the squeeze play, okay? So you got the flat 200, you got the rising 20, and it's especially great when the, when the stock goes, uh, uh, is trapped between the rising 20 and the flat 200. And so you get equal highs and higher lows. And eventually what happens is, of course, you guessed it, the 20 MA comes from underneath the 200 and it breaks out nicely to the upside. Okay, so you're getting higher lows, which what does higher lows mean? Higher lows means the buyers are stepping up um, and not letting the stock fall as much as it did last time. So the buyers are becoming more and more bullish while the sellers, equal highs means the sellers are holding their ground. But we, the, so the sellers are neutral so, or holding steady, but the buyers are getting more and more aggressive. Does that make sense? So that, I love that play when it sets up like so. I've played, I've taken a few of these over the, over, over the last, this year, over the last few months. Uh, this is similar, not exactly because it's not oscillating, so to speak, between the 20 and the 200, but it's similar. So I like this for a squeeze up, a push up over 293. The stop, there's two places to, to place the stop. There's right here under the base, or if you want to give it a little bit more room, and that would be under this bar's low, which is 254. Okay, either 254 or 263, whatever you want. Um, if you're in, a subscriber to the Strategic Swing Trader newsletter, I've already picked the plays. I'm not going to take all of these, obviously, but I, I've picked the plays for us, for the newsletter. Log on to your T3 Live account, and you can access the, the, the newsletter or, uh, as is right now. Or feel free to wait until Monday at 8 a.m. East Coast time. It will hit in, your inbox before then. Okay? All right. Next on the list is AR. I regret not playing the AR. I called it as an idea only rather than an official play uh, as a long-term play. So if you look at the monthly chart, this is breaking out on the monthly time frame. AR is oil. I like it higher. Already broke out. But we have the one, two, three setup. One, the igniting bar. Bar two is the resting bar. And if we get another big green bar, on uh, Monday, then that will trigger the one, two, three setup long. Over the bay, over this bar's high, the entry would be over 536, so 537. 537 is good good to go. And then the stop would be under the, the second bar's low, which is 494, 493. Okay? I've done a separate video. I've actually done two or three videos on this pattern alone. The one, two, three continuation play is what it is called. It's in my YouTube playlist. The link for that is in the description. If you want to get my YouTube playlist, link for it is in the description. ASMB is a transition A breakout. So over the base, stop under the sparse low. It looks good. It's transitioning higher. I like it. ASMB. Uh, ATXI, similar. Maybe not as good, but it's also really, really thin. So over the base, stop under it and target around five bucks, maybe slightly more even, 550 on the ATXI. The FTIV is a base breakout. And then also the IPOE is similar. I don't know what's going on, but I, I you know, I, I found these uh, SPAC stocks, right? The special purpose acquisition stocks, companies that got hit hard and uh, started to base. And last week we played the IPOF. I think it's IPOF. I had it on on last week's uh, newsletter. It got it, it got to target one in one day. Look at that. We played it. I don't usually play low the day or b bases that are basing at the bottom of the range like this one is, but it looked so good that I had to play it. And so it broke out and got to target one in one day. So these two here, that's the IPOF. Uh, another I think acquisition stock. These two are similar. I like the FTIV a little bit more because it's cleaner than the IPOE. But the IPOE is a lot more liquid. So there you go. Pick your poison, as they say. Okay, so those two are breakout ideas. KOS, I believe another, yeah, another energy stock has the breakout bar, the narrow range bar, and you guessed it, the one, two, three setup. Okay, that's the KOS. I like it higher over 240, stop 216, and check out the target on this, pretty big up here. So let's say 345, not bad at all. 
on the KOS. MHLD, we were in it. I got skipped on the I got skipped on the order, but I actually already called this long over here and I got skipped myself, but it has pulled back since then and now we have a buy setup over 217. What I like about the MH MHLD is the monthly breakout. Okay, you see it, it already broke out and now it's giving us the chance to get in it on a pullback on the daily chart. Weekly is pretty good too, so I like it. MHLD, but incredibly thin, incredibly thin. Uh, NXE is similar to the AR and the KOS. It had the breakout already, and now a wide range igniting bar, a narrow range bar, long above it, stop below it. What's beautiful about this is the, is the base. Look how long of a base the stock broke above. Beautiful. Now, did I see it here when it, that's when I should have played it the first time, but did I, did, did I have it on my list? No, I didn't. Does that make sense? So that's why I'm trying to chase it through the one, two, three setup. But it's, to tell you the truth, it's not one of the ones that I'm gonna be playing for Monday. So I'm just gonna be watching this one. But I love that initial base breakout. Ovid, OVID had a mega gap down. And oftentimes after the initial, the, the gap down, the big gap down, and then the initial selling, the stock stabilizes and then it, it goes back up. I'm not saying it's gonna go back up and, and go you know to eight bucks or seven bucks. No, but can it pop to here for a few days? Yes, and that would be my target around 325, I believe. Yeah, that's 328. Uh, we played the Cat B last week. That was the best play, I think, and I, I sent out an alert to trail it bar by bar on the intraday charts because it was up, I mean, it was up 100% maybe, some close to 100%, maybe not quite, but close, very close to 100%. Uh, so that was actually our best play. Now, we trailed out of it at the top because we went bar by bar, but notice the same thing, big gap down, initial phase of selling, kind of everybody that wants to be out or was already out, it broke out. And a few days later, we got the reward. We got that big bar. Now, do I think Ovid is uh, as good? No, but I'm not really looking for as big of a move, just to the prior high, okay, on the OVID. So I like the Ovid. Uh, next is PAA. PAA is oil. So, you know, I wouldn't play every oil stock, but you got KOS, PAA, AR, I think NXE is clean energy to tell you the truth. Uh, you know, we got a few oil stocks. PAA had a beautiful buy setup back here on December 2nd. And now we have another pullback to the rising 20 over the spars high, 903, stop under 847, target the prior high. That's a beautiful buy setup, okay? So I like the PAA as a daily buy setup. The SCAPH is similar to the OVID, right? We talked about this just a few minutes ago. We had the big gap down and now we have an hourly base breakout. Another, unlike the OVID in this case, thinly traded, it doesn't do much volume. So over the base, stop under it and look for it to retrace back up to the prior high, which it looks like is around 650, okay? Around 650. It's not one of the ones that I'm gonna play, even though I like it because it's a little too thin for me. SND, so check it out. SND, I was already, I had a call on it for two, three days in a row as a breakout over the base, stop under it, and it wouldn't go, wouldn't go. And then finally, on Wednesday, I think, it broke down. So I canceled the call, which didn't trigger for two, three days. It was an open play, I mean, an open uh, order for it, wouldn't trigger. And then it broke under the hourly base, and I said, okay, this is no good. So I canceled it, and the very next day it popped. Give me a break. <laughs> so it broke out, now I missed it. But now maybe I didn't, because I got the narrow range bar. Now this bar, unfortunately, is a little big. We like them when they're small, because when they're small, you, you know, you get a tight stop. The tighter the stop, the more share size you can have. The higher the reward to risk, okay? So it's a big stop, but I like the larger time frame on this. The monthly breaking, breaking the long-term monthly downtrend, the weekly is breaking out. So I like it. Over this bar's high, stop under the low, okay, on the SND. STSA is another one of those big gap downs and it has a breakout. I already have a position in it, but half size. So I'm thinking about adding to it over 518. Okay, stop would be under 466. Looks good. As an, added, you know, as an add or as a new position. 
if you're not in it at all. Last but not least is the Zag. I prefer to play breakouts that are at the 20. So this is a little bit away from the 20, as you can see. But I just want to sh show you this beautiful weekly chart. Check it out, guys. Isn't that a beauty? Beautiful. So the highest bar is 425. The highest bar is 4. Oh, that's 416. So we already cleared it. So I, I just like that 1, 2, 3 a lot on the weekly chart. Okay. The daily is not as good, unfortunately. The monthly is not as good either because we're still in a downtrend. But I just love that weekly chart. So idea long over 425. Let's take a look at the hourly chart. I like to look at the hourly chart because the hourly chart tells me whether the stock is ready or not. And as you can see, it popped and based. So this is ready and it is above the 20. And so the entry over the base, stop is just under it. Got it? Beautiful. Love the weekly chart the most on the Zag. The bearish list. As I said, we have a long list this week. So I appreciate you sticking around uh, with me until the end. Uh, we got BB, BlackBerry. Now, BlackBerry had a, had a huge gap up that got sold. I didn't think we would actually recover. I mean, that the BlackBerry would go up as much, back as uh, up this much. Because this was highly bearish to, for it to gap up generate put in a big top and tail and get crushed so the fact that it recovered as much as it did i'm gonna stay away from it shorting it but it looks pretty interesting look at that hourly chart as the base breakout breakdown right here under the base stop just above it so it looks interesting but um I, i'm a lot more picky when it comes to the shorts than i am the longs because the market is bullish the market is you know you just fall in so to speak if the market is bullish you want to be playing mostly long and the market is bearish you want to be playing mostly short uh, short so i'm a lot more picky when it comes to the shorts because of the market so I, i'm you know i'm not going to be playing most of these whereas i'm playing a bunch of these uh, longs okay big big it's a breakdown looks beautiful but not a lot of room because we have support right here so that's the only issue see how weak it is right here recently look at the hourly chart Look at the breakdown coming, stop above, but it doesn't have a high reward to risk ratio. That's the only issue. Uh, CODX, I've had it on my bearish list for a while, but I've never played it because it never really based. So over here started to, I thought it was gonna base, wait for the 20 to catch up. It didn't, it dropped. So I've been waiting for it to base long enough so that it's off the 20. Remember what I told you just a few minutes ago? I like to play right off the 20. So under the base target around eight bucks, it's really looking, I mean, it's looking really, really bearish. But I'd love for the setup to tighten up a little bit, for the pattern to, to, to tighten up a little bit, okay? On the CODX. Fate. Okay, fate is maybe a stretch to put it on the bearish list. But the idea behind this is when you get a big move up and a narrow range bar at the top, that signals the reversal. It's like a car, you know, going going driving down the street and then finally pausing to make a u-turn so if we break under this bars though this could become a climactic sell setup look at the, the monthly chart vertical is this sustainable maybe maybe not but i like it as a short under this bars low under 92.12 stop over 97.30 and i would target th their support right here already maybe it falls a little bit more but that would be my target uh, the the fate JWN um, a bunch of these uh, retail stocks are rolling over a little, little bit JWN Nordstrom is one of them it looks slower to retrace back down to the 20 MA that blue line so the entry for this would be under 30 30 23 stop above the base for example Capri Capri is also looks slower under the base under the green bars low stop above the base uh, what else so we have a few of these I mean top i guess top could be considered retail looks lower under the base under the base but it does have a rising 20 under the base and then target around here 28 28 so you know we have a breakout failure on the top that's a breakout failure right here but i like them when the base and the 20 flattens out and then you get the breakdown so it's not it's not perfect yet but i just wanted to share it with you so that you have it as a watch item for next week next is the momo Tell me the Momo doesn't look lower. You go ahead and tell me. Look at this. Look at this bear. 
I mean, it is really, really bearish. It's a Chinese stock. It's by far the most bearish Chinese stock out there. Gap down on earnings. We played it as an earnings play short. Into earnings, we took it short. And now as a base breakdown. The only issue with it, that's, this is the only issue, is look at how many bars down already in a row on the hourly chart. So it's been selling off for quite some time. I would love to see it base for one more day, just one day. And then under the 20, you know, on the hourly chart. But looks definitely lower under um, 1293, stop over 1422, and target around $10, what target one, target two is eight bucks. Look at it, it's bearish on every time frame. The bigger the top, as they say, the bigger the drop. Look at how big the stop is. So this is definitely heading towards, I think this is nine bucks, nine or eight, nine bucks, and then maybe even 672, 675. But it looks so bearish. It's the most bearish stock that I'm aware of. Momo. And then also Sage is pretty bearish too. Um, I had a call on it at $27 over here, long. It gapped above my entry by 27 cents, by 20 some cents. I'm not sure exactly how many pennies. Gapped above my entry, it went to 76 bucks. No, 86 bucks. 86 bucks. So I, I tried to play it as a transition on the daily chart w way back at the beginning of the pandemic is when it transitioned right here in April and then it gapped over my entry by just a little bit and then I never caught it basically and it just went up and up and up and now has a beautiful monthly sell setup it may take some time before it's ready to drop it may take some time but that's a gorgeous looking monthly sell setup short so I really like it long term short I'm mentioning it right now I skipped because these two uh, are definitely long term short shorts not just short term not just for a few days i like them long term nerve is a base breakdown on the hourly on the daily chart looks beautiful under this base under 250 252 stop let's take a look at the hourly chart the stop just needs to be on the other side of the 20 ma on the hourly so it'd be it'd be over 270 okay under 250 by 270 and target at least target one would be the sparse low which is 181 that would be target one okay on the nerve looks good now, uh, the, uh, what do you call them? The EV stocks, Neo, Nikola, let's go ahead and add Tesla so we can just talk about it for a minute. Um, also, they're looking a little bearish. Neo has kind of a one, two, three. It's not really a one, two, three, but can be shorted under 41.25 by 43.63. Target is 38.50, 38.40. Could it now break under this and get down to the next support area around 30 bucks yes sir it can uh, but uh, you know it's tough uh, so more bearish than the neo is the nicola which disclaimer i'm already in it but i would like to even add more to it because the initial entry has a big stop looks slower nicola sell setup slash base breakdown it just needs to take out hopefully takes out friday's low which is 1736 stop us over the base and go on vacation because I think this looks much much lower now Tesla your favorite stock uh, is not extended it's not that extended already had that correction just like the market did already corrected and got bought so is it really gonna drop more mm, not so sure I, it's not on my list I just wanted to go over it because I was going over the Neo and the Nikola um, could it retrace back to 566 sure does the weekly look a little toppy with that topping tail, that that narrow body bar? Yes, it does. Uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to fall apart. Uh, even if it drops, I don't think this is going to drop that much. Okay, the Tesla. But again, it's not some of the. I mean, it's not something I'm looking to short. But I just thought I would talk about it anyway. Pack B is climactic. Climactic means you know when the stock goes vertical and becomes unsustainable. So. You see this? That's climactic. In fact, was it my best play? We just took a play. Uh, I'm not logged into my account at all, but I, we just took a play on Friday in the room. So as I said, I'm not even logged in. And it was a climactic sell setup also that worked out just at the end of the day. So when they go vertical like this, especially if the bars are getting bigger and bigger with time, that means more and more people are getting in it, which means it's going to run out of support demand and so you can short it you can look for it as a short now this one triggered uh, triggered on a couple of days ago under this bars low 
So, you know, it triggered already, but under this bar, it would be kind of like a double, double, uh, I'm logging in to see what that, what the symbol was that I took on Friday, but there was a play that I, that I, uh, that, I that I did as a climactic cell setup. So it's going to take a second, but under this bar's low, okay, under this bar's low, a short as a climactic cell setup, and I would target the 20 MA. Stop is over the, over the highs. And then Sage, we talked about a breakdown under, under 68 bucks, stop over 73.42, long-term play, not a short-term play. And top we talked about, but it's not, it's not perfect, in my opinion. Um, here's my account. Uh, no, it wasn't the best play. It was the Viru, V-E-R-U. It, was, it made 1600 bucks. I didn't have any big plays on Friday, but I didn't lose, I mean, I didn't lose much at all. My, big, my biggest loss was 400 bucks. So, and and F sell I guess was another four hundred dollars. Those were my biggest losses, and because of that, you know, I, I got a couple of two thousand dollar plays, you know, two thousand, two thousand, sixteen hundred, fifteen hundred, one thousand over here, nine hundred. So it added up. Check it out, seventy five hundred for the month. This is December, guys. December is usually pretty slow, isn't it? Look at that, guys, for December, and today is December twelfth. So that's pretty good for a December. That's amazing. I wasn't expecting that for December. And then for the year to date, well, you can see it right here. Year to date is, you know, closing in on a mil. But I only opened this account in March. If I had opened it in January, I was trading other accounts in January and February. And, and even up until March 9th. If I had opened it in January, I would probably already be at a, at a mil. But uh, this is, uh, you know, I opened it in, uh, in, in mid-March almost. March 9th is when I started trading it. But uh, at any rate, uh, what was I going to tell you? So ah, I was going to tell you something else. I forgot. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed today's video since I forgot what I was going to say. I hope, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did and you stuck until, with me until now, and you stuck around until now, I, pff, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. Okay? And if you have any questions, reach out to customer service, info at t3live.com. Again, info at t3live.com. I hope you have a great day. Uh, we, we rest of the weekend hope you have a great trading week next week and i will talk to you soon take care everybody ciao